And now, Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland. He, of course, sits on the House Oversight and Judiciary Committee. He's very busy these days, Congressman. Thank you for being there. Let me just begin with that. What is your response to your Republican colleagues who say the president's just <clears throat> joking? Well, do they think he was joking when he withheld $391 million in security assistance to Ukraine and then sent people over there, including Rudy Giuliani, to shake them down? to extract from them a commitment to investigate Joe Biden, to unleash prosecutors and investigators on Joe Biden. Was that a joke, too? Mm -hmm. um, look, I think anybody looking at this, any reasonable observer would understand that's a completely absurd defense of the president, who now has involved not just Ukraine, but uh, Russia and invited China. Look, I think we should step back and ask the question, why is it a big deal to get them involved? Because. You know, I disagree with Jim Jordan about almost everything, but I would defend with my life his right to participate in our politics. But that's not true of Vladimir Putin or Ukrainian prosecutors, Russian spies or Chinese operatives. Right. They should not be involved in American so, elections. So to that, to your exact point, Congressman Raskin, listen to this. Mike Pompeo, who, by the way, we now know was on that July 25th call between the president of Ukraine and President Trump. Here's how he defended it speaking in Greece over the weekend. Look, nations do this. Nations work together and they say, boy, goodness gracious, if you can help me with X, we'll help you achieve Y. This is what partnerships do. It's win-win. It's better for each of us. I don't, I, I'm not offended when your prime minister asks me, can you, can you help us with X? Right? Doesn't, doesn't bother me a lick. It's win-win. It's best for all of us. Do you agree? Well, uh, they're confusing international cooperation on economic and military and security objectives with the president converting the office of the presidency into an instrument of re-election and an instrument of private self-enrichment. That's what this president has done. He's treating the government of the United States as though it's part of his political campaign, and he's putting our national security at risk by trying to use other governments against American citizens. We've never seen anything like this. It's completely unprecedented in the history of our country. Here is what uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said over the weekend about the whistleblower who, who he believes not only needs to testify before Congress, but needs to do so in public. Listen to this. If the whistleblower's allegations are turned into an impeachment article, it's imperative that the whistleblower be interviewed in public under oath and cross-examined. Nobody in America goes to jail or has anything done to them without confronting their accuser. This is Kavanaugh all over again. He even said, Congressman, quote, if that doesn't happen in the House, I will make sure it happens in the Senate. This is those 90 former national security officials just wrote a letter saying we must protect the whistleblower. What is your reaction to Senator Graham saying they have, their identity has to be made public? Well, the desperation of some of the Republicans is quite extraordinary at this point. It used to be a bipartisan commitment that we protect whistleblowers because we want them to come forward with the truth of the conduct of our elected officials. But we don't have to depend on just this one whistleblower. Not only is there another whistleblower who's about to come forward, but everything that the whistleblower said has been corroborated by independent objective evidence, including the contemporaneous transcript of or a memorandum about the phone call that took place on July 25th between uh, President Trump and President Zelensky. We also have objective, verifiable evidence of the president's withholding of the military assistance at the same time in order to create coercive leverage over this vulnerable ally resisting Russian aggression. So everything the whistleblower has said has been objectively borne out by the testimony of other witnesses and more are coming forward every day. And you can see already the contradiction in what they're saying. On the one hand, they're saying there's absolutely nothing wrong with what they did, as President Trump puts it, it was a perfect call, it was a perfect strategy. On the other hand, you can't believe the people who established the reality and the facts of that call and the strategy that, the, that unfolded in order to put pressure on Ukraine. Congressman, on the impeachment question, obviously you're, you're, you're leading on this front, and I, you've said that you think articles of impeachment are inevitable at this point. You said that to our Manu but Elizabeth Warren, uh, Democratic senator running for president in 2020, said over the weekend when she was asked by a reporter, quote, you've seen enough evidence to convict yourself, meaning to convict in the Senate, and she said yes. I wonder if you think that it would be more prudent for members of the Senate to wait until they see evidence before saying they are ready to 
convict. What do you make of her answer? Well, but I didn't see the interview, and I assume what I Senator can, Let Wolf me play it. I, ha I have okay. it, I believe. I think we can play it. Just, just to give, do we, if, if they can get it back in there, we will play it for you, just so you sure. can see look, the totality the, I mean, of what she said. Here it is. Okay. You have enough evidence to convict yourself? Yes. So you, you would vote right now to... to look, the I, I think the evidence is clear. When Donald Trump released the transcript in which he solicited a foreign government to interfere in the 2020 elections, he broke the law. Your thoughts, Congressman? Well, um, what I take Senator Warren to be saying is that the evidence at this point is overwhelming of the president's culpability for perpetrating this plot, which was a complete sellout of our Constitution. Now, I, I'm certain, I don't speak for Senator Warren, but I'm certain her position would be if there is evidence that contradicts it, then obviously she would change her mind. But at this point, there's no evidence coming forward. All we're getting really is uh, the irrelevant distraction of the president calling people traitors and spies and them complaining about how unfair the process is and all of these extraneous immaterial arguments. They really don't have any answer to the fact that what the president did is to unleash his operatives to go and to shake down the Ukrainian government in order to get political dirt on American citizens who are you know, his political rivals and then cover the entire thing up. And nobody has been able to negate a single element of that story and the evidence piles up every single day as more people come to testify. They're better off doing what they're basically doing now, which is admitting it and saying, well, he wasn't really serious, he wasn't kidding, everybody does it. But all of that, again, is a distraction from a very serious offense against the Constitution of the United States. I would note the president of Ukraine uh, said at the UN, I didn't feel any pressure. We have to leave the conversation here. We'll be back to it very soon. Congressman Raskin, always appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You got